I spent two months building this button. It has a custom PCB, RGB LEDs. It was the hardest project of my life, and I only built it for one reason. I am lazy. As a developer, to save your code, you open the terminal, write git add dot, git commit dash m. Here, you write a message that describes the code you're saving. We finish with git push. This gets very annoying when you have to do this every day, multiple times a day. So my button is going to hopefully be able to automate the entire process. The biggest problem we're going to have is we got to figure out how to write that commit message. Also, I'd like to write the code for the button so that I can control almost anything that's connected to my home network. Feeding the dogs, turning on all the lights in my office, doing the dishes. Okay, maybe not doing the dishes. Step one, we have to design the physical button. It has to feel and sound amazing. My goal is to steal components from high-end mechanical keyboards. They sound really great, have a thocky, chunky feel that makes them super pleasant to use. I get this mainly from the key switch. In this case, we're using a special edition called Novel Key Kale Thick Click. We'll need to design the PCB, which is terrifying because I've never done this before. Hey, sir, I got the custom PCB for the button you're building. Thank you, short short wearing delivery guy that knows way too much about my life. After waiting about a week for the PCBs to arrive, they came in looking incredible, but they do not work. This was devastating. I redesigned the PCBs, waited another week, and this new PCB came in. I'm really hoping this time it's gonna work. Let's find out. Before we put components on our PCB, we have to put down some solder paste. I'm doing this by hand with a syringe, as you can see here, and these pads are very small. So for someone with shaky hands, this task is almost impossible. The right way to do this would be to buy a stencil when you buy your PCB, and then you just spread the solder paste right onto the pad. I'm using the pick and place machine to place the components on the board. It essentially uses a small vacuum to pick up electrical components that are smaller than a grain of rice, like capacitors, resistors, and even LEDs to make this button work. The last component to go on the board is an ESP32-S3. This is just the brains of the board and makes everything work. We're going to throw the boards on a hot plate at 155 degrees, and this is going to reflow the solder so that all the components are attached to the board. This takes around 30 seconds. Next, we have our switch plate that I 3D printed. This is gonna hold the switch and the stabilizers to the PCB. The stabilizers just ensure that the switch goes up and down and doesn't get jammed up, kind of like your space bar. We're gonna hold that in place temporarily with some screws and nuts. This will let us solder the switch to the actual PCB itself. Finally, we can throw some code on our board and check to see if it works. And we nailed it. Our last step is to print our keycap and our base and get our button assembled. The button works over USB-C by emulating a keyboard, except for we can control the exact output of the keyboard. That's how it can open the terminal and write the commands to push our code to GitHub. I know what you're thinking. How are we gonna send that commit message? Cursor has a built-in function that analyzes your code changes and can write a commit message with AI for you. Now, if you want one of these for yourself, I'm doing a limited run of 20 units of my button. You can get one at the description down below. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Also, I'm fully aware that we could have set up a macro for this on your keyboard, but there's nothing as fun as slapping a big green button to send your code off to GitHub.